Evening everyone, welcome along. It is Saturday the 22nd of April. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, so we've got 50 questions plus your usual Saturday breaks, bits and pieces to come along in about a minute and 20 seconds. So plenty of time to go and grab yourselves a pen and a piece of paper, get yourself a drink, get yourself nice and comfortable wherever you're sat and watching the quiz this evening. Um, usual, um, yeah, usual sort of Saturday um, setup really. Uh, entertainment, a uh, bit of geography for round two. Uh, Round three, so I'll listen to a bit of your feedback actually with round three. So last week I tried a different style of round where I called it crossword clues and I gave you a bit of a, a sort of, they're all from a, a familiar theme. I think it was musicals, wasn't it, last week? So, um, and then I put the number. So, you know, if you're playing a crossword, you've got how many letters it's going to be, etc. Um, so I've made a bit of a twist, I've made a, a twist, I've made a bit of a, a tweak to it, if you like. So I've kept it for this week because uh, I've got a few of these um, already built up. Uh, this style of round. So uh, what I've done tonight for it is it's still crossword clues. So it's still those kind of clues you'd see, you know, doing a crossword. Uh, I've kept the numbers at the end. They are all the answers ha do have a common theme, uh, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. That'll make it a little bit trickier. Uh, although saying that probably won't once you get a few of the answers in. So it's sort of like a crossword clue connection round. Yeah, I don't know. I'll work on a bit of a, a bit of a better word for it than that. Anyway, welcome along. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. It's five seconds to go and we'll get the quiz up and running and underway. Um, and yeah, so hello to everyone. Uh, that one there. Let's do that and do that. Welcome along. It is Saturday the 22nd of April. Uh, as this goes out, whenever you may or may not be watching it, it might not be the 22nd of April. Uh, so as always, don't forget, some of the questions may not be relevant by the time you get to it. Anyway, let's crack on with entertainment as we always do let's start with this number one uh which singer was living la vida loca in 1999 Oops. uh which singer was living la vida loca in 1999 Uh, change number two during which war was the tv show mash set so during which war was the tv show of a mash set uh, come back number three Scroll wheel's not working properly on my mouse. Uh, number three, who played L Woods in the Legally Blonde movie series? So who played L Woods in the Legally Blonde movie series? Uh, number four, which group said everybody wants to rule the world, according to the title of their 1985 song? Great song, that. Uh, which group said everybody wants to rule the world, according to the title of their 1985 song? That's going to be in my head all day now, actually. <laughs> uh, number five, which long running cartoon series started life on the Tracy Ullman show in 1987? So which long running cartoon series started life on the Tracy Ullman show in 1987? Number six, which car brand is synonymous with the Italian job movies? Ow. Which car brand is synonymous with the Italian job movies? I guess we know Jack gets his bump, 
nicknamed him Mr. Bump because the amount of damage he does to himself in school by falling over. At least we know where he gets it from. Uh, number seven, who played DCI Jane Tennyson in the TV series Prime Suspect? So who played uh, J uh, who played DCI Jane Tennyson in the TV series Prime Suspect? Number eight, what was the name of Buddy Holly's backing band? So what was the name of Buddy Holly's backing band? Number nine, which comedian is synonymous with the TV shows The Office, Extras and Afterlife? So which comedian is synonymous with the shows The Office, Extras and Afterlife? And finally, for entertainment then, at number 10, in which year was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire released? Peter Kay and Tony Christie released Is This The Way To Amarillo? And Deal Or No Deal made its UK TV debut. So in which year was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire released? Peter Kay and Tony Christie released Is This The Way To Amarillo? And Deal Or No Deal made its UK TV debut. It's coming back, isn't it? And I am toying with the idea of applying. I've, I've always wanted to have a go at deal or no deal, and then they stopped it. So I'm toying with the idea of applying. Okay, round two then. A bit of geography for you this evening. Let's get into this. Uh, starting with this, number one, uh, what is the most southerly capital city of Europe? So what is the most southerly capital city of Europe? Number two, although not having an official language, 78.5% of the USA speak English. But with 13.2% of people, which language comes second? So although not having an official language, 78.5% of the USA speak English. But with 13.2% of people, which language comes second? Number three, which of these Canadian cities is furthest east? Is it Montreal, Ottawa or Toronto? So which of these Canadian cities is furthest east? Is it Montreal, Ottawa or Toronto? Oh, <laughs> Toronto. Uh, number four, Logan Air is the largest regional airline in the UK by passenger numbers. But which of the nations is its main hubs? So Logan Air is the largest regional airline in the United Kingdom by passenger numbers. But which of the nations is its main hubs? I.e. where's its headquarters and where does it mainly base itself? Ow! Oh, diddly, diddly, diddly. Uh, number five, the Cambrian Mountains in Wales are the source of which of UK, which of the UK's longest river? 
The Cambrian Mountains in Wales are the source of which UK longest river? Number six, what is the top horizontal colour on the flag of India? So what is the top horizontal colour on the flag of India? I did a quiz a few weeks ago and I was talking to um I was talking to the the people that I was hosting the quiz for and they were saying that one of the group bought them all sort of like flag posters when I was doing uh, every the picture around with flags and everything. So they were all doing their research. Well, that was quite cute. Number seven, Madeira, Gran Canaria and Boa Vista are islands found in which ocean? So Madeira, Gran Canaria and Boa Vista are islands found in which ocean? Number eight, how many time zones does mainland Australia have? So just talking about mainland. So how many time zones does mainland Australia have? Number nine, which of these countries does the Alps not run through? Is it Spain, Slovenia or Liechtenstein? So which of these countries does the Alps not run through? Is it Spain, Slovenia or Liechtenstein? Liechtenstein. And finally for geography, number 10, true or false? The equator passes through Ecuador. So true or false, the equator passes through Ecuador. Ecuador. That's a retro song. <laughs> Showing my age a little bit there, I think. Right, let's move on quickly. Uh, right, so round three, uh, crossword clues then. So as I said before at the start, uh, did this round last week. Made it far too easy by telling you what the... Um, common theme was with them all uh, so i've left the numbers on so at least that gives you a bit of a hint there is a common theme that runs through them so think of this as a crossword clues connection round but you don't have to name what the connection is you're just going for the answers round far too many words crossword clues let's kick it off with it whoa 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 middle scroll wheel try again number one uh we're not flying to neverland this member of the darling family might have opened up her own restaurant chain six letters Oh, yeah. And for the purpose of clarity as well, I've dropped out. This is going to really upset someone if they're playing tonight. Uh, but I've dropped out all apostrophes from the names so that it's not like, you know, five and one or what have you. Um, so think of them as how they would look on a crossword. So we're not flying to Neverland. This member of the Darling family might have opened up her own restaurant chain. Six letters. Question number two, fall like what? Seven letters. Guarantee you there's a collective sort of, eh? But fall like what? So seven letters. Yeah, just double checking. Train. As I said, there's a common theme that runs through all of them. So if you don't know, put this to one side and come back to it in a minute. Uh, number three, a tunnel under a road for use by pedestrians is called a what? Six letters. So a tunnel under a road for use by pedestrians is called a what? Six letters. Number four, Cinco Chicos. 
four and four. <laughs> so cinco chicos, four and four. Number five, diaries were written about this specific type of kid. Five letters. So diaries were written about this specific type of kid. Five letters. Number six, the ruler of patties in buns. <laughs> oh, this seems so much funnier when I wrote this <laughs> originally. Uh, the ruler of patties in buns. I amuse myself. That's possibly part of it, I suppose. Number seven, the bluegrass state in the USA lends its name here. So the bluegrass state in the USA lends its name here. One, one, one. Uh, number eight, if the <laughs> excuse me, let me try that again. If the sun had money. So if the sun had money. Uh, number nine, you might find this name between Nicaragua and Panama. So you might find this name between Nicaragua and Panama. And finally, number 10. <laughs> If an old farmer opened a restaurant train, he might have called it this. So if an old farmer opened a restaurant chain, he might have called it this. Right, that's your first 30 questions there for this evening. Um, I'm going to take a short break. So they're up if you need them now. Uh, you'll have to go to Twitter because it's pre-recorded tonight. So go over to Twitter and the link to the three individual rounds are there because I've not worked a better way of doing it yet, to be honest. Can't just say, go to jvpqquestions.com because if I'm not sat in front of the computer to push the button, then it doesn't appear. Uh, so if you go to those three links now, that'll give you rounds one, two, and three. Uh, right, for your first break this evening, uh, after the news this week, uh, well, I think it was Friday the news came out. So after the news on Friday that uh, the Ukraine, once um, things get sorted out, they're going to be invited to be a part of NATO. I was looking into a few things about NATO. That's just what I do. That's the way out I am at times. Um, and I sort of found that the... F uh, turn that off. There we go. Uh, the fur... What's that gone over there? Sorry, but I'm just trying to make sure I've got everything in the right place. Right. Um, so, yeah. I've uh, Just, just yeah. There are 16 countries coming up on screen in just a moment. All you need to do is find the 12 founding nations of NATO. There we go. So... The 16 countries are well, were part of NATO. Obviously, one of them is no longer existing. Um, but yeah, just find the 12 founding nations. So when NATO was set up, find the 12 founding nations. So 12 possible points. Only four of them are wrong. Nice and simple for a Saturday. I'll see you in a bit.
Okay, the right answers are going to turn green in just a moment's time. Ooh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, um, yeah, so I'm going to give you a minute on these. Um, 7 after 11 is coming. Uh, I'm just trying to find some time that I can uh, get these pre-recorded. I need to get I need to get one of my tech people um, who's going to help me with something, uh, with part of it. So I just need to get them in place. But the majority of everything is on the right lines uh, and looking good. All the test runs we've done. Uh, so I'm getting ready to be able to record a pilot of that. So if you have applied, thank you. I will be in touch. Don't panic. I've not sort of like gone, nah, stuff it. I'm not using you. I will be you going through the list. I've got loads of people. Um, and I think we're going to do a two-week pilot rather than a one-week pilot now. Uh, just because of the amount of people that I want. I want to try and get as many people involved as possible. So yeah, 7 after 11 is coming. I just need to find a bit of time just to sit down and spend a day, get everything put in place, contact everyone, get the dates sorted and then get them recorded as well. Uh, right, let's turn these green then for the ones of the 12 founding nations of NATO in three, two, one. And the easiest way to do this is to give you the ones that weren't the founding members of NATO. Uh, so the four that answers that were wrong were Greece, West Germany, Turkey, and Spain. Those were the four wrong answers. The other 12 were founding nations of NATO. So the other four came along a little bit after. In fact, let me just quickly, because you'll all be looking through your answers and trying to work this out. So let me just uh, swing that across to there. Uh, NATO. Do, 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 do. Members of NATO. Da, 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 da. Uh, so where do we go? Uh, so, yeah, uh, in addition to the 12 founding countries, four new members joined during the Cold War. It was Greece and Turkey in 1952, West Germany in 1955, and Spain joined in a very, very good year of 1982. They have currently 31 countries are, um, are members of NATO as it stands. But, yeah, like I said, um, after the news this week, the, the Ukraine are be, will be invited to join at some point. Okay, uh, right. That is that part. Of, that is your first break. Something, bit, uh, something coming up for your second break. A bit of sport one, uh, sport one for your second break. Um, I'm just making sure I've got everything in the right place. That's there. That's there. That's there. Perfect. Right. Get your answer sheets together. Let's see how you did with the first part of the quiz. Uh, Thirty questions. Thirty answers to give you. You got them. You got your answer sheets ready. You swapped over. Marking pen ready. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's always tricky doing pre-records because I've got nothing to bounce off. And it literally is for a pre-record me sat in a room talking to myself. I know I've been doing that for the last three years, but at least when I do lives, I've got like social media to bounce off. Anyway, right. Let's give you the answers to the first part of the 30, the first 30 questions before I lose plot completely. Uh, round one entertainment starting with this according. No, there we go. Round one starting with this. Which singer was living La Vida Loca in 1999? It was Ricky Martin. She's into superstitions, black cats and voodoo dolls. Number two, during which war was the TV show MASH set? It was the Korean War. Number three, who played Elle Woods in the Legally Blonde movie series? It was uh, Reese Witherspoon. Number four, which group said everybody wants to rule the world according to the title of their 1985 song? It was Tears for Fears. Great song. It really is a great song, that. And number five, which long-running cartoon series started life on the Tracy Ullman show in 1987? It was The Simpsons. And number six, which car brand is synonymous with the Italian job movies? It's Mini. Number seven, who played DCI Jane Tennyson in the TV series Prime Suspect? It was Helen Mirren. Number eight, what was the name of Buddy Holly's bo uh, backing, backing band? Backing band, it was the Crickets. Number nine, which comedian is synonymous with the shows The Office, Extras and Afterlife? It's Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais? Ricky? Uh, yeah. I'm not even going to get into that debate. And finally, in number 10, in which year was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire released? Peter Kay and Tony Christie released. Is this the way to Amarillo? And Deal or No Deal made its UK TV debut. It was 2005. I'm looking forward to seeing Deal or No Deal back this year. 
Round two, with geography number one, the most southerly capital city of Europe is Valletta of Malta. It's classed as part of Europe, makes it the most southerly. And uh, number two, although not having an official language, 78.5% of the USA speak English, but with 13.2% of people, which language comes second? It is Spanish. So, yeah, was that, uh, hang on, let me see if I can do some quick maths. 80, 91, 91.7% 90 of the USA speak English and Spanish. Number three, which of these Canadian cities is furthest east? It is Montreal. Number four, Logan Air is the largest regional airline in the UK by passenger numbers, but which of the nations is its main hubs? It is Scotland. Number five, the Cambrian Mountains in Wales are the source of which UK's longest river? It is the River Severn. Number six, what is the top horizontal colour on the flag of India? It is orange. Number seven, Madeira, Gran Canaria and Boa Vista are islands in which ocean? It's the Atlantic Ocean. Number eight, uh, New, Ze uh, New Zealand, start again. Australia even has three time zones. Number nine, which of these countries does the Alps not run through? Uh, it is Spain. And number 10, true or false, the equator passes through Ecuador. It is true. And straight away, the song Ecuador goes back into my head. Ecuador. Do, 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 do. Uh, your crossword clues then. Uh, number one. And you'll see if you haven't already worked out what the theme is. You'll work it out very quickly. When not flying to Neverland, this member of the Darling family might have opened up her own restaurant chain. I did give away a clue on the first question. Uh, but it's Wendy's. Number two. Fall like dominoes. Number three, a tunnel under a road for use by pedestrians is Subway. Uh, number three, Cinco Chicos is Five Guys. It's Spanish for Five Guys. Number five, diaries were written about this specific type of kid. It is Wimpy. Number six, the ruler of patties in buns. This one did. I, I, when I wrote this, I did like, laugh my head off. Uh, but it's Burger King. I said, I amuse myself. Uh, number seven, the bluegrass, the bluegrass state in the USA lends its name here. It's KFC or Kentucky Fried Chicken. Sorry, an old an old jingle. I've, I've, like I sort of like completely lost. An old jingle came into my head then of KFC. It's Kentucky Fried Chicken. Du, du, du. I can't remember the words though. Where's that come from? Uh, number eight. If the sun had money, Starbucks. Again, I laughed when I wrote this. Uh, number nine, you might find this name between Nicaragua and Panama. It's Costa, as in Costa Rica. So the Costa coffee shop. And number 10, if an old farmer opened a restaurant chain, he might have called it this McDonald's, as in old McDonald. So yeah, they were all fast food or takeaways, however you want to look at that. Um, but yeah, that was the common theme through them. And that was all of your answers. My brain does really work in mysterious ways. So that Kentucky Fried Chicken answer, and all of a sudden, that must have been from the 90s, that. I'm going to have to look when I finish pre-recording this, but it's Kentucky Fried Chicken. If I keep doing that, then the algorithms might kick in and then it might give me a copyright strike for it. because <laughs> so It'll be someone's piece of music. Oh, that's going to bug me. But that's how my brain, honestly, my brain seems to have this thing. And friends of mine get really frustrated in the, yeah, sorry, talk your scores up, by the way. Um, but friends, I'm just, I'm just filling time while you all talk your scores up. Um, but yeah, friends of mine get like that because I'll be sitting in the pub at like quiz night and something will be there. Yeah, there'll be a word said or something. And then I start finding a song that just fits or a line from a song that just fits. And yeah, very weird thing to have.
I think I need to lie down. Anyway, right, let's move on with the rest of the quiz. Still 20 questions to come uh, for this Saturday evening, for the Saturday 22nd of April. Uh, connections round then, an actual connections round, unlike the last sort of crossword clues that had a sort of connection in, but you know what I mean. Uh, as always, though, connections round here, nine questions. Question number 10, what links them all together? Now, I will be honest, this is evil. This is very evil. And I have played fast and loose with one of the answers. It sounds the same, but it's not spelt the same. But I, I wanted to include it and I couldn't find one that was a reason that it was spelt that without giving away what the connection is. You'll see what I mean when it makes sense. But as always, nine questions. Question number 10, what links them all together? Uh, yeah, this is evil. I'm not going to lie. Let's kick it off with this for number one. Uh, what W describes an unused area of land that has become barren and overgrown? I hope Haley picked up some Easter eggs because she's going to need them. Uh, what W describes an unused area of land that has become oh, barren and overgrown? Uh, number two, what is the name of the strategy board game of diplomacy, conflict and conquest? No, it is not Monopoly. Although, out of the corner of my eye, I'm going to have to go on to Monopoly Go in a minute because I'm getting notifications left, right and centre. People are attacking me and I think my shields are down. Uh, what is the name of the strategy board game of diplomacy, conflict and conquest? I'll tell you what, the amount of people I've introduced to that Monopoly Go game, by the way, I should be on a commission for it. Not paid to advertise, by the way. I've not been sponsored by them. It's just I'm happy with the game and love it. Uh, number three, according to the saying that means it is human nature always to find fresh cause for optimism, what springs eternal? So according to the saying that means it is human nature always to find fresh cause for optimism, what springs eternal? Number four, using the power of sport to inspire recovery and support rehabilitation. What was the name of the games founded by Prince Harry? So using the power of sport to inspire recovery and support rehabilitation. What was the name of the games founded by Prince Harry? Number five, ablaze and frozen water. <laughs> should, have, should have saved this for the um, for a crossword clues round. Uh, but ablaze and frozen water. Number six, Dick Turpin is the most famous example of which criminal role? So Dick Turpin is the most famous example of which criminal role? Uh, number seven, what animal was Tigger in Winnie the Pooh? Ooh, 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 ooh. Shame, Tigger. Uh, what animal was Tigger in Winnie the Pooh? That's kind of the only real accent that I can do that I'm happy with. Ooh, 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 ooh. Shame, Tigger. T I double G R. Uh, number eight, according to legend, which birds leaving the Tower of London will indicate the crown and Britain will fall? 
One recently escaped. <laughs> According to legend, which birds leaving the Tower of London will indicate the crown and Britain will fall? Slightly concerning that the fate of Britain and the crown is based on six of these birds, but hey ho. Legend says that if I get through a quiz without making a single mistake, it will be the end. But there you go. Uh, number nine, which two letter word creates a conditional clause? So which two letter word creates a conditional clause? And as always, question number 10, what links all of those nine answers together? If you've got this, I will go fair play. I mean, there are a couple of sort of obvious answers towards the end, but I may have just given far too many clues. Right, let's move on. Uh, let's wrap the quiz up then tonight with general knowledge as always and 10 random questions for you. Let's start with this for number one. What B describes the characteristic scent of wine? So what B describes the characteristic scent of wine? Number two, which Spanish island is home to the Reina Sofia airport? So which Spanish island is home to the Reina Sofia airport? Number three, while sleeping, the condition where breathing stops and starts is called sleep what? So while sleeping, the condition where breathing stops and starts is called sleep what? Number four, on the flag of Ireland, which colour is to the left as you look at it? Train. Uh, on the flag of Ireland, which colour is to the left as you look at it? And I mean straight on, I don't mean look at it from behind. Uh, number five, in American football, what do the letters QB stand for? So in American football, what do the letters QB stand for? Right, there's a cockerel crowing outside. Oh, I can hear it. And number six, what C is the watchmaker was, uh, what C is the watchmaker synonymous with the calculator watch? There's an extra word in there that I don't need. Right. What C is the watchmaker synonymous with the calculator watch? I had to, this was, this didn't have the what C at the beginning of it originally, but then I did a bit more research and realized a few other companies made the odd calculator watch. Uh, but this company, it's very much synonymous with them. It is frustrating because sometimes I put a, you know, most people know what answer I was going for, but there's always someone who will come out and go, oh, but hang on, there was the, this company did this watch and it just gets a bit frustrating. Uh, so sometimes it become easier. Number seven, Necker Island in the Caribbean is a private island owned by which British entrepreneur? So Necker Island in the Caribbean is a private island owned by which British entrepreneur? Entrepreneur. Uh, 
Number eight, horses are measured in hands, but how many inches are there to one hand? So horses are measured in hands, but how many inches are there to one hand? Two to go, number nine by diameter, which is the largest planet in the solar system. So by diameter, which is the largest planet in the solar system. And your final question for this evening for the main part of the quiz, number 10. Which boxer bit the ear of Evander Holyfield during their 1997 fight? So which boxer bit the ear of Evander Holyfield during their 1997 fight? Okay, there you have it. That is all of your questions then for this evening's quiz. Uh, so if you head again, if you head over to Twitter, uh, you'll be able to find uh, a recap. If you need any time to, if, uh, if you want any of those repeating, head on over to Twitter. I'll give you the two links for both of those rounds. Uh, right, another short break for this one because it's FA Cup semi-final weekend. I thought I'd go down this road uh, because I was quite surprised when I was reading something about this this week. So let's see how many of you, how many of these you can do as well. Uh, from most recent to furthest away, put these teams in order. They last won the FA Cup. Hmm. So from most recent to furthest away, put these teams in order. They last won the FA Cup. I will see you in about seven minutes. Bye.
I'm just having a sneezing fit then. Um, yeah, because even though it's pre-recorded, I don't sit there and just like, I do still my sit here like I do on a Thursday night when it's live. And just like, do, 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 do. And it'll break or finish in seven minutes. Yeah, so um, anyway, right. I'll give you the answers. Put these in the right order in just a moment's time. Uh, yeah, still do. It's not, see, the problem is, this is the problem when I pre-record Saturday. I haven't got much space between Thursday nights and Saturdays. And it's not really... Much has happened or gone on since. So, yeah, hello. <laughs> right, let's put these in the right order and wrap the quiz up. Uh, in three, two, one. And there we go. So the most recent winner of the FA Cup was Liverpool in 2022. Followed by Leicester City. They last won it in 2021. Uh, third place is Arsenal. They last won it in 2020. Uh, Manchester City in fourth, they won it in 2019. Uh, Chelsea in 2018. Manchester United last won it in 2016. Uh, the gaps, by the way, in the years, they're filled up by teams who are further up. Uh, Manchester United last won it in 2016. Uh, Wigan Athletic, 2013. Uh, eighth was Portsmouth in 2008, so five years in between that. It was all won by, you know, the likes of Liverpool, Manchester City, United, etc. And in between that, in between Portsmouth and Everton, the last sort of unique winner, Everton in ninth place, 1995. So between 1995 and now, the FA Cup has been won by those teams on the screen. 1991, last time my team actually picked up the FA Cup less said about that the better anyway right uh so grab your answer sheets together let's see how you did with the final 20 questions this evening dun, 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 dun. have you got them are you ready no that's the wrong screen joe that one there are you ready you all settled in got your drink ready okay let's do Let's do it. Uh, right, let's wrap this up then. Connections round number one. Uh, what W describes an unused area of land that has become barren and overgrown? It is wasteland. Number two, what is the name of the strategy board game of diplomacy, conflict and conquest? It is risk. Number three, according to the saying that means it is human nature always to find fresh cause for optimism. It is hope springs eternal. Number four, using the power of sport to inspire recovery and, uh, and support. Re uh, start again. Using the power of sport to re inspire recovery and support rehabilitation. What was the name of the games founded by Prince Harry? It's the Invictus Games. Number five, a blaze and frozen water is fire and ice. Number six, Dick Turpin is the most famous example of which criminal role? It's Highwayman. Number seven, what animal was Tigger in Winnie the Pooh? It is Tiger. I've played fast and loose, but it's pronounced exactly the same. So that's why I've written it there in, um, before anyone tries picking me up on it. Number eight, according to legend, which birds leaving the Tower of London will indicate the crown in Britain will fall its raven? And number nine, which two-letter word creates a conditional clause? If. What links them? Number ten, they are all poems. Hence why I put the tiger spelling with the Y. Tiger, tiger, burning bright. It's pronounced the same. I'm allowed. <laughs> but yeah, they're all poems. How'd you get on with that? Uh, right, general knowledge. Let's wrap this up. Number one, what B describes the characteristic scent of wine? It is its bouquet. Number two, which Spanish island is home to the Rena Sofia airport? It is Tenerife. Number three, while sleeping, the condition where breathing stops and starts is called sleep apnea. Number four, on the flag of Ireland, what colour is to the left as you look? It is green. Number five, in American football, what do the letters Q, B stand for? It is quarterback. Number six, what C is the watchmaker? What C is the watchmaker synonymous with the calculator watch? It's Casio. Number seven, Necker Island is in the Caribbean is a private island owned by Richard Branson. Number eight, horses are measured in hands, but how many inches are there to one hand? There are four. 
Number nine by diameter, which is the largest planet in the solar system, it is Jupiter. And number 10, which box a bit the ear of Evander Holyfield during their 1997 fight? It was Mike Tyson. Apparently after that, they became very, very good friends, I believe, uh, reading some bits and pieces while I was researching some sports questions. But yeah, they became very, very good friends. Bite his ear and become friends. Anyway, uh, right. Tot your scores up. If you need a tie-breaking question to separate yourselves, this is it. I have rounded this up, by the way, to the nearest whole number because uh, it came out as a decimal. But how many calories are in a single chicken nugget from McDonald's? So how many calories are in a single chicken nugget from McDonald's? Ooh. Yeah, so I rounded it. It came out as a decimal because I got the got the answer for six chicken nuggets and then obviously divided it by six. So, yeah, it was a decimal. So I rounded it up to the nearest whole number. Remember, nearest to it gets the point or however you're playing along with the tiebreaker question. Okay, three. Two, one. 44. There are 44 calories in a single chicken nugget from McDonald's. It's 43.5, it works out, but you always, if you're at 0.5 and above, you always round it up. Below 0.5, you round it down. So yeah, 44. There you go. That is it for this evening. Thank you very much for joining us tonight on this 22nd of April or whenever you're watching it. Uh, let us know how you got on. I think there might have been a glitch on Thursday. I, I'll be honest, so Thursday night, I've had a few uh, back problems this week. Uh, so after I finished Thursday night's quiz, I literally went, turned everything off and went straight to bed with a hot water bottle but i believe there may have been a glitch that the after quiz um sort of score post didn't go out uh on facebook or twitter um so apologies for that but i'll um i'm scheduling everything tonight so i'll make sure it's up and ready for you uh for this evening but yeah thank you very much for playing as always thank you very much let us know your scores and that is it from me I will see you all soon. I'll be back with you on Thursday. Another live quiz on Thursday. Uh, next Saturday is definitely pre-recorded again because it's Sarah and Jack's birthday. Uh, so we've um, got some people around uh, for Jack for his birthday. That is it from me. I will see you Thursday. If I don't see you before, that's it from me. As always, I'm trying to stall because there it is. As always from me, we'll see you soon. Take care. I don't know why I winked. I don't. As always from me, take care. We'll see you soon. Stay safe. <laughs>